You're, you're out there. Oh, I am here. One of the two. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship this morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, is it not? Amen. Do I hear a resounding amen? amen. No, I'm a resounding amen. amen. That's it. We're going to stand and sing this morning, and we're going to sing of the Lord's great love. The Lord's great love is everlasting, and it goes from everlasting to everlasting. And just in saying that, it means it's endless, it's round and round. And, you know, we could sing of his love forever, and it would not be enough praise and worship of him, would it? We could just keep going forever, and that wouldn't be enough. Although that doesn't cancel us from doing that. We're just going to stand and we're going to sing, I could sing of the Lord's great love forever. And this is Paul talking about Jesus. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. Built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him 
you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit.
is actually launching like a YouTube channel. So it's a channel uh, with lots of videos and stories and different things um, for kids. So that's really exciting. The official launch is happening on Friday the 25th. Um, and yeah, it's gonna be so awesome. So keep an eye out for the newsletter. Feel free to pass it on to other kids you might know um, in your family or anywhere else. So that's the, yeah, Salvos Kids Australia is starting a YouTube channel. Uh, next, the uh, self-denial launch is next week, and we're focusing on a series called The Ripple Effect. So that'll start next week. And last but not least, I have heard a very exciting announcement this morning from Lincoln that the Caldwell Classic is back. Yeah. Caldwell Classic is back. Um, so great fun and games for guys, so this is a men's only, but guys of all ages. Um, for, yeah, so men only, and it's here at the hall starting back on Saturday the 5th of March at 6pm. So there'll be more details in the newsletter, but get excited, Colo Classic is back. And that's all from me this morning. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Our today's Bible reading is from Second Peter, chapter three, from New Living Translation. The day of the Lord is coming. This is my second letter to you, dear friends, and in both of them, I have tried to stimulate your wholesome thinking and refresh your memory. I want you to remember what the holy prophets said long ago and what our Lord and Savior commanded through your apostles. Most importantly, I want to remind you that in the last days, scoffers will come mocking the truth and following their own desires. They will say, what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming again? From before the times of our ancestors, everything has remained the same since the world was first created. They deliberately forget that God made the heavens long ago by the word of his command, and he brought the earth out from the water and surrounded it with water. Then he used the water to destroy ancient world with a mighty flood, and by the same word, the present heavens and earth have been stored up for fire. They are being kept for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. But you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise, and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire, and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and godly lives you should live, looking forward to the day of God and hurrying it along. On that day, he will set the heavens on fire and the elements will melt away in the flames. But we are looking forward to the new heavens and new earth he has promised, a world filled with God's righteousness. And so, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, Make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. And remember, our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. This is what our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him, speaking of these things in all of his letters. Some of his comments are hard to understand, and those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different, just as they do with other parts of scripture. And this will result in their destruction. Peter's final words. You already know these things, dear friends, so be on guard. Then you will not be carried away by the errors of these wicked people and lose your own secure footing. Rather, you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All glory to him, both now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Vino. Thank you, brother. Bless you. Bless you, Davis. We have had a feast already this morning. Wouldn't you say in worship we've had a feast? What a blessing. What a, what a wonderful blessing. And... Uh, Many people have, have contributed and chosen the right kind of music, the right kind of songs, the right everything to prepare our hearts for worship. And let's really make the most of what God has in mind for us today. There's a wedding on this afternoon. Seb and Jacqueline, Jacqueline Windolf, Seb Georgie uh, are getting married. And it was a big deal for them to get married on the 22nd of the, sorry, the 20th of the 2nd, 22. So that's uh, pretty exciting for them. That's four o'clock today. So uh, I'm conducting that wedding and it'll be a lovely, lovely time of celebration for their family. Another great reason to celebrate too is the beautiful music we've had, which Ren contributed to again. 
and open their hearts to some beautiful words that the songsters sang in the past and that has been a blessing to us as well. I see some extra uh, power in the band and also up here, Roger, where are you Roger? Stand up Roger, I'm going to make you stand up. This is Roger, make sure you shout out to Roger. part of their short church for a long time and uh, he, he really feels that God wanted him to be involved in the in the worship team and he confessed to me one day that he played the drums and I thought yeah that'd be helpful <laughs> but he really felt the desire to sing and I don't know if you've heard him I did and it was tuneful beautiful <laughs> thank you very much Roger thanks to everybody who sang and, and presented music today it's been a blessing I want to share a short story with you and then we'll move into the scripture and, and see how the two get tied together just ideally for us this morning. It was seven years ago on the 20th of February, seven years ago today actually, in 2015, a severe cyclone crossed the coast of Rockhampton causing $600 million in damage in, the, in its wake. Cyclone Marcia was a Category 5 cyclone, uh, and that's the strongest rating you get if you're a cyclone. It's a 5. It was right up there blowing a gale. No offence to anybody here called Gale. <laughs> Especially Category 2 over there. <laughs> Mild-mannered uh, Jen and I were living in Rockhampton at the time, and of course, it bridged the, the coast there. And at one point, in the midst of that storm, we heard an, a mighty, a really loud crack, and it wasn't thunder or anything like that, it was just made something broke. And uh, sure enough, what had happened was a huge tree in the front yard of the house was blown over flat. It was a huge tree, huge enough for its branches to cover the windows of the house, not damage the house as such, but make the house darker than what it was at that time. And we, we, we gawked at it in amazement and a little bit of worry. We were very fortunate. The wind roared up the street like a train and that's the only damage that occurred to us. And there's that tree I spoke about, the front yard, lots of rain, beautiful green North Queensland. And there's mulch I was saving for another day. <laughs> now later that day, you know, the eye of the storm went over our street and all our neighbors ran out, had a good look around and then went back inside and waited for the rest of the storm to subside. But later that day we walked the streets and uh, I couldn't believe my eyes, there were so many mature trees that had just been blown over in the street. And the street was a nice uh, development, curved, nice curved road. And on, on every area where the road curved out, there was a tree laid flat. Eventually, I went looking for a better understanding of how mature trees like this might be laid over flat. Uh, why would they have been so vulnerable, I asked myself. And this is what I discovered. There's the tree, there's the house. To make the housing development look good and attract buyers, the, uh, the developer planted trees in the front of every residential block. That's possibly the first thing they did. They knew where the blocks would be divided. And right at the front, they planted trees. They installed the watering system that would guarantee lots of water, so lots of growth, and a source of water which at some point would become redundant because the developer would be all cashed up and he'd turn off his, the tap, however that supplied all of that development, and he'd walk away and pay his water bill, presumably. The problem was this. A relatively thin layer of topsoil and the watering system itself which made it easy for the tree to grow well and look good. However, the roots had spread horizontally 
in a shallow soil instead of vertically, which is natural for the tree in pursuit of water. Nourishment, right? The roots went out like that and not like that. And it's the water and the soil. The trees were substantial, but the shallow soil and the lack of strong, deep roots prevented them from standing up to the challenges of the storm. So, what's the spiritual lesson here? Anybody know? Now, don't get excited. This is not the end. But what's the spiritual lesson here? Do you think, if you were to spiritualize this story, what do you think is a lesson you might draw out of it? For your own consideration or sharing it with a child. Have good footing. Have good footing. Thanks very much, Scotty. Good to see you again, mate. Bless you. Can you see? Play the drums? <laughs> just just checking. <laughs> Mandatory questions. <laughs> Anybody else want to add to that? Deep soil. Go deep. Deep, deep soil. soil. Yes. And go deep. Yeah, deep soil. Go deep. So often, of course, the builders throw all their rubbish at the front and then the machine comes along and lays it flat, makes it hard, they put four inches of soil, 100 millimetres of soil on it, and they say, job done. Well, it's not really. Someone else? Take your mask out. Who was that? Just talking to George. Oh, that's why. I that's why I could hear it. Okay. Now I made mention of this, a little bit of this last week, in prayer, in a prayer that we pray, that we keep sending our spiritual roots deep. Keep sending, be proactive in driving your spiritual roots deep. We're going to see how we can achieve that. Back to our reading. First and foremost, the Apostle Peter reached out to believers for a reason. And that reason was that God had laid this purpose upon Peter's heart. I want to suggest this morning that God places a spiritual purpose upon the hearts of every salvationist. Every one of us here. God will lay a mission, a calling, a purpose on us. And he asks us to respond. Jesus said to Peter so long ago in John chapter 21, take care of my sheep, Jesus said. And then he went on to say, feed my sheep, not lambs, but sheep. Tend and mature my sheep is what Jesus was asking of Peter. So Peter reached out to these people, these people. Peter wrote to believers because their faith was being tested. Peter was very aware of the importance of the believers growing in their faith because the sheep had dispersed. Christians had, had been driven, dispersed, uh, driven all over the, the, the country. And we, because they were living in foreign lands, they faced constant pressure to conform to the culture around them. Now, if there's anybody here been living overseas, and there's, there's quite a number who have it and still do to some extent, you will know about the pressure to conform to the local culture. Well, they needed to keep sending their spiritual roots deep, regardless of the pressure of the local community. Now what does that say to you and to me today? Has your encounter with Jesus ever impressed upon you the importance of strong spiritual roots? So Peter goes on to encourage believers to be on guard. 
Be protective. Be alert. I find it interesting that Peter's final words are a warning to believers to be on guard. They were actually to guard against other people. And the scripture says these wicked people who might seek to undermine your belief in Christ. And the scripture says that, that he didn't want them to lose their, their secure footing. In spiritual terms, they needed to be well grounded in Jesus. So they needed to keep sending their spiritual roots deep. Who are the wicked people? What is the secure footing Peter is speaking about? Well, the wicked people. In 64 AD or so, the second coming of Christ was no longer thought as imminent. For some believers, it was like the wind had been taken out of their sails, just like every generation of the Israelites had to be reminded over and over again of their roots. Many Christians faced ridicule because they believed that Jesus would come again just as he promised. And yes, Jesus will come again. Amen. Jesus is coming again to separate the life from the lifeless. Just saying. Thanks, George. Bible scholars suggest that the believers were being taunted and laughed at by people who knew Jesus Christ. Or they knew of God's promises. But their faithfulness to what they once knew and their commitment to God was slipping or had lapsed entirely. Fizzled out. I don't know about you, but uh, I know of a few people who've really invested in some hobbies, you know, gone out of their way to buy this and do that and make that and make inquiries and join a club and, you know, eventually it fizzles out. It's, it's not in their heart. There's a mission right there, folks. It's not for everyone. But God has laid that mission field on some people's hearts here. And Peter says to the uh, Christians uh, facing persecution, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in God's sight. And I just love that phrase, make every effort. Don't let the people around you and the forces that might push against you cause to lose your footing or cause you to be uprooted. The wicked are not those. The wicked are not those who never believe. Let's get that straight. The, they don't care less. They don't. They have not been uh, in a situation where a crisis perhaps has brought their attention to God. The unbelievers don't care. The wicked are not those who never believed. Rather, the wicked are those who once believed and no longer fully believe. Peter goes on with this a little more in the previous chapter, 2 Peter chapter 2. Keep sending your spiritual roots deep. What is the secure footing in verse 17? The secure footing Peter is speaking about and what is currently under threat is your own secure footing. A secure footing is the epitome of living holy and godly lives. And there's always a threat of this being uprooted, lost or reduced in value today when compared to the choices being made around us. Living holy and godly lives is never orchestrated by our own preferences unless that preference is an active and constant seeking to live the life that God has in mind for you right now. We sang a song this morning, beautiful song. I worship you, 
there's a line there that says, the reason I live, the reason I live is to worship you. That's where we must be standing. And that's where we must be standing strong. Full of the Holy Spirit to running over. Roots that have grown deep into the Word and deep into relationship with Jesus. So Peter advises believers today to make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in God's sight. And I might just say it again. Keep sending your spiritual roots deep. Please. Now, I just want to consider in closing the living of holy and godly lives. Don't you sometimes wonder what these words mean? In the New King James Version, it just says it slightly different. It says, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? That's the kind of person that God wants you to be. Strong and upright. Making a marvellous example for others. Now Peter concludes, counsels, so Peter counsels deep spiritual roots by guarding or protecting your holiness, effectively your state of being consciously set apart for God and his purposes. That's holy, consciously set apart for God and his purposes. And that means not allowing other things to affect that conscious state of being holy. We focus on that as opposed to many other things. And Peter counsels deep spiritual roots by guarding your godliness, meaning your character, which under the influence of the Holy Spirit becomes godly, like Christ himself, affecting who we are in all avenues of life for the world to see. There are lots of people in this world who are uh, jaded or damaged by their past interaction with the church or, or sadly with, with church people. Perhaps they've had their expectations dashed by those of the early church who said, we're just waiting for the coming of Jesus, I can't wait any longer. And they turned their back on Jesus. Perhaps what some people need is someone to embrace the mission of rebuilding other people's faith in God. Helping them see when shallow spiritual roots need to be guided into a more deeper function and thus prevent their weaknesses and certainly preventing a downfall. Deep spiritual roots means, means strong spiritual nourishment. So, friends, be on guard, live holy and godly lives, keep sending your spiritual roots deep. Eternity, for many, depends on it. The eternity of the people around you would depend on it. Now, Coming to the conclusion, to everyone, the Holy One, the Almighty, He saw the seed planted in you. He saw the seed planted in you. And He will direct the depth of your roots according to your willingness for them to go deep. He will direct. He will direct the depth of your roots according to your willingness to want them to go deep. He will see you stand firm in the face of opposition. How deep are your spiritual roots today? We're going to uh, consider a beautiful song with rich words this morning. At a time as a time of reflection.
And uh, the place of prayer is always open for us to make our confessions to God or to plead for him what we need most or to, to feel that in that sacred place, a holy place set apart here, that in this holy place we can call on Jesus to be with a certain person, a loved one or friend who we know desperately needs to have their roots go deeper. It's something that will sustain them and give them substance and nourishment, spiritual nourishment. And as we sing, you can sing along. It's, uh, it'll be on the, on the screen. By all means, sing along. But bathe in this song like it's a baptism. Can I ask you to do that? Bathe in this song like it's a baptism. Find cleansing. Find a spiritual backbone. Find a spiritual purpose. Don't stand back. Step forward and send your spiritual roots deeper. You will be blessed abundantly if you allow God to be your strength and your purpose. And as we sing, maybe you, you felt the hurtful impact yourself of others and have stepped back from being the disciple Jesus needs you to be. Give that some thought. Perhaps for some it's a rude awakening. You've realized that your spiritual roots need to be sent deeper. You haven't realized how, how shallow your roots might be. They need to be deeper into the Word, that Scripture, and deeper into prayer, that's talking with Jesus, and deeper into relationship with Jesus, deeper into conscious love for God that marks your life as saintly in the face of all others. These are the words. I'll sing your praises forever, deeper in love with you, God. Close to your throne, I've found where I belong, deeper in love with you. We sing that to the Almighty who's seen the seed sown in you, who sent someone to water it, who waits to see what the harvest might be like under our witness. So let's enjoy this song together. And let's, let's really ask God to speak to us, to challenge us, and to bring us under his care. The way uh, the mercy seat is always about, the way to the place of prayer is always there. I've reinstituted the cross here thinking that I, I really like the fact that we have the picture of the Trinity here. It's a holy one, all together. But let's sing an invitation to prayer and confession and, and new vital strength is here today for each of us. God bless you. song made it so easy to make confessions to. And so we give thanks today for the gathering of the saints, prepared to sit before God and confess our shortcomings and sin and pledge with the strength of the Spirit to be stronger 
and face all opposition in Jesus' name. We ask, Almighty God, that you bless the saints here gathered today and prepare the week for us to prove you more than enough. Amen. Amen. There's something there for people who are not well. There's something there for people who are struggling with questions. Something there for people who are not sure of their purpose. There's something there in God's word for us today. For everyone. Praise his name. Our final song is vibrant. So let's make adjustments for that now. It's been very reflective. And it's been a delight. But let's be vibrant about this next song too. I'm living my life for Jesus. His love and grace I've seen. And now that I live for Jesus, life has a newfound theme. We're going to sing that twice too, I think, uh, Ben Master Champion. Let's stand together and let's not hesitate but sing this very well indeed. Thank you. Sneak a breath here, and I go. <laughs> and people think I've got some kind of uh, speech impediment, but it's just the way it's going to work. You know, doing things over and over like that. But anyway, can't wait to give it to the mass. We're uh, let's pray that this week we hear from our, our government here in the ACT, and they say churches have got to thrive, and uh, let's open our doors and our hearts to people. Let's not be foolish. Though, let's be careful. There are people who, who, who need to really take this precaution for themselves. We need to respect that as well. A benediction. The Apostle Paul says much of what the Apostle Peter had to say, and they support one another. Let your roots grow down into Him, and let your lives be built on Him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overthrow, overflow with thankfulness. Take that thought with you today. Whatever you've got to do about your spiritual roots, drive them deeper. Thank you. Coffee and tea is available, lots of fellowship. We don't, we can, we don't have to sit down to consume our, our beverages or our biscuits or anything like that. Hallelujah. And the band are going to just give us a treat as we go about getting our morning tea. God bless you folks. Have a good day today. May God be your guide and your blessing, your strength and endurance. Thank you.